What is up my friends and how's it going? Welcome back to the 18th episode of our Let's Play series as Pathia with your fellow comrade Summary. We had started out with a single region in Nisa. We turned our attention westward and consolidated our holdings in the starting province of Parthava, which is our capital province, after which we marched our horde armies eastward, conquering Haraiva, subjugating Sranka and the Bactrians. We then wiped out the Mauryans in Maka and Karmania. Meanwhile, we also conquered Mada and Parsa, crowned ourselves Shah of Shahs, after which we subjugated the Haik and wiped out the Seleucid faction by owning the fertile crescent of Mesopotamia, Palmyra, as well as Yehuda. We then focused our attention to Anatolia in the north, subjugating not only the Pontic faction but the Udi in the Caucasus, after which we had broken the deadlock at the Hellespont in Necomedia, pushing into the Balkans conquering Thracia, Illyricum and Macedonia, while also instating a satrapy, the Achaean League. After this, we had focused our armies in the north, subjugating the royal Scythians, taking out the Bosphoran kingdom and giving our royal Scythian satrap the provinces of Sarmatia, Bosphorus and Scythia. Meanwhile, in Arabia, we had declared war against the Ptolemies and we have subjugated Muscat and given them the entire control of the Arabian Peninsula, after which we pushed westwards into Egyptos, Ethiopia and Libya, subjugating the Kushites in the, prov in the province of Ethiopia. Meanwhile, the Romans, who started out as our defensive allies and also had a military access and trade agreement with us slowly started to deteriorate their relationships with us subsequently breaking all of their treaties and actually going so far as to declare war against us roma although is not as big as our faction is nothing to scoff at they pretty much own almost the entirety of the western roman empire save for britannia in the north and the westernmost regions of iberia However, without any further ado, let us hop back into the campaign and have a quick look at all of our provinces. So our provinces seem to be fine and I might actually go ahead and upgrade that mausoleum as if you look at our objectives, we are pretty much almost completed every single objective of every single type as you can see. With the military victory, all we need is the province of Latium. With the economic victory, all we need is to maintain trade relationships with just five more factions. And with the cultural victory, all we need to do is actually build the royal mausoleum. So even though we have about seven to eight episodes left in this series, we are easily going to achieve one, if not all of these uh, victory conditions. So there's no point waiting for, you know, to complete the cultural victory and even though I achieve a victory objective, I am going to play for the full 25 episodes of this series. One thing to note is that in order to get to this position, I had fast forwarded a lot in the episodes. I didn't want to conquer the historical extremities of the Achaemenid Empire. And currently I am at that position and in fact far better than our Achaemenid predecessor. However, now that we are fighting a war against Rome, I will slow down things and I will be playing turn per turn. Meanwhile, a quick look at our army's horde for oh, Syria is slowly making its way to the Balkans in order to deal with the Roman armies. Meanwhile, up here in the north in the province of Sarmatia, we have Horde 5 Asia also making its way into the Balkans. Finally, in the far east, all the way at Parthava, we have three armies over here. Horde based armies recruiting up, Horde 9 Africa, Horde 10 Gallia as well as Horde 8 Italia that's building up and since this is actually Horde 8 Italia, what we actually want to do is build up a Horde based army. I was under the impression that they are a siege based army and so I was recruiting siege based troops, however that is not necessary, we are going to go ahead and form them up in our typical Horde based army composition. Meanwhile, a quick look at the developments in Egyptos. Um, things are seeming 
fine. We do have another horde based army here. Horde 7 Egyptos. And we are going to march them towards Kyrene. Meanwhile, we also have two armies over here in Libya pushing westwards in an attempt to capture Cyrene as well as Ogilla. And as you can see, we have Army 2 Mesopotamia, which is our standard base siege army. We're going to go ahead, lay siege to the settlement of Kyrene. And we're also going to go ahead and lay siege to the settlement of Ogilla. However, without any further ado, even moving up north into the Balkans, as you can see over here, we do have more armies that are making their way into the Italian peninsula through Cisalpine Gaul. We do have Horde 1 Parthia led by our Shahanshah himself. We have Horde 4 Italia, which is a siege-based army. And we also have Horde 2 Parsa, which is a Horde-based army. We are going to go ahead and try to attack Tavium in this turn as well, if this Roman army Legio 7 Concordialis is not within reinforcement range. Let's just quickly go ahead and try to attack the settlement. And as you can see, they are not within reinforcement range. So we can go ahead and attack the settlement. I am going to fight this battle. However, it is a pretty easy battle against a, uh, against a garrison. And so I don't really think we need to actually see the battle. So I am going to go ahead fight the battle and I will see you all after the battle however before that is done we are going to have a quick look at our politics we do have an emergent a political rival the house of Miran however all our other parties are quite loyal meanwhile our family tree has grown to a very respectable size we do have some characters who can get married so we are going to go ahead marry off those characters and apart from that, there's nothing much else to do in this turn. We can have a quick look to see if our faction leader can educate any of our children. And he can go ahead and educate the fourth generation. And we have a couple of kids in the third generation as well who will need to be sent on an education or for tutoring rather. So let's go ahead and do that. And before we hop into any of the battles... What I am going to do is quickly describe our economy. Previously, we had Asia Minor as well as Mada as our economic provinces. However, I am in the process of converting Mada into a resource province. As you can see, it's no longer taxed. And our main economic provinces are actually now Asia and Egyptos, both of which I consider to be S tier provinces. As you can see, Asia is making 806,371 sesterce per turn meanwhile egyptos is making 78525 however they're still upgrading a lot of buildings within egyptos so egyptos should also rise to about 100 100000 sesterces per turn meanwhile if you look at our overall net income it is at 111574 sesterces per turn and meanwhile we also have almost 2 million gold in our treasury so we are looking really good in terms of economy and we are also looking really good in terms of our food management and pretty much right now we can go ahead and play with our economy turned off however without any further ado let us go ahead and uh, attack the settlements that we need to attack beginning with the uh, siege of Ogilla and once again it is a garrison siege so I'm not going to show this fight and I will see you all after the battle is done. And down goes the garrison of Ogjila. And we are going to go ahead and just peacefully occupy the settlement. It is of Parni culture. So we should have a decent amount of population in the province. So we can replenish. Meanwhile, we are quickly going to convert the buildings that we can convert. And... Uh, yeah, pretty much we are going to also move our dignitaries across if we can. Seems like all of our agents are already locked. So we can't really move them. But the idea is to march all of them across Africa. And then eventually into Sicily. So the plan against the Romans is to... To, you know, to... Do a double pincer attack. So we are going to attack from Cisalpine Gaul. And then when all of our armies that are marching westward get into position in the Balkans. We are going to launch a southern invasion into uh, Magna Gratia. 
then we are going to conquer the entirety of the Italian peninsula by a pincer movement. Meanwhile, our armies in Africa will conquer Libya away from the Romans. And then we will go ahead and conquer all of the Roman African holdings, liberating Carthage as a Punic satrapy and giving them the entire province of Africa. After that, we will release the Numidian factions at Capsa and give them the entire province of Numidia. We will also release a Mauritanian satrapy in Tingis and give them the province of Mauritania. Then we are going to push up north with our army and conquer Roman-held Iberia, releasing Iberian factions and of course creating satrapies out of them. And finally, we are going to create a bunch of satrapies in Gallia. And uh, yeah, with that, we can call an end to the campaign. A very successful campaign and uh, yeah one of the things uh, that I do need to do and I did forget that I have to do is uh, I have to get a fleet in the Mediterranean and I don't need Navy One Parthia over here this is a fleet led by Naram Suen what I am going to do is I am going to reinstate the fleet in a side we are going to go ahead, pop it into the port and start to recruit the ships that we need. Unfortunately, we don't have really good ships. We have very, very low tier. I wouldn't even call them mediocre. Very low tier ships. However, we are going to have to play smart with our navy as the Roman navy's, navy is pretty much the only thing that can deal with us. Without any further ado, let us hop into the Battle of Patavium. Once again, I'm not going to show this battle against a standard garrison army. It's not required and I am going to save time for the major clashes against Rome such as the siege of walled settlements as well as engagements with Roman legions itself. And with that, I will see you after this battle is done. Alright, and with that, down goes the Patavium. And uh, we are going to go ahead and just simply occupy the settlement. Ideally, I would like to loot or raise it. However, we only lost 29 troops in the battle. And so by occupying the settlement, we get a slightly, uh, you know, population that can help replenish our armies. And uh, for sure, this Roman stack will attack this isolated stack at Petavium. So we are going to move him out of the settlement so that we can fight in the fields instead of a siege. Going to go ahead, turn off the taxes in Petavium. Quickly dismantle the buildings. Meanwhile, we could convert this building for a supply line. And uh, pretty much that is what we are going to do. As we do need supplies, otherwise Patavium could very soon well be a choke point into Italia. So we're going to have to watch out for that. And before we go ahead and end the turn, let us not forget to lay siege to Kyrene. Kyrene is a wall settlement. The auto resolve isn't favorable. I am going to quick save over here, hop into the battle, and I will see you all in the battle. All right, welcome to the battle. All of our units are in position. We are going to move on our Armenian legionaries who are in control of the ladders towards the enemy ramparts. Meanwhile, we are going to move group number seven to get into position closer to the walls, which we are going to break with our field artillery. Meanwhile, we can also move our elephants towards the walls in order to deal with the enemy units. The remaining two units of our Armenian legionaries can move up ahead to support the ladders. And finally, we can move group 6 to the gates. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Our general can meanwhile come forward. Archers, we're going to toggle on that guard mode real quick. And let's have a look at all of our troops. As you can see, our Morian armored longbowmen already unleashing volleys into the enemy archers really beautiful looking unit designed by sergeant Neem suraj and yours truly summary himself and uh, we have armenian legionaries designed by cam very nice looking eastern legionary unit slowly marching its way up to the ramparts with those ladders and of course 
who can forget we do have the Spartan Oplite over here in group 7 and we are going to put them into that phalanx formation for that extra shield value and missile block chance one of the really best uh, hoplite units in the game and behind them of course we have yet another de unit designed by myself and sergeant meme suraj the morian tower elephants and finally our artillery also getting into position meanwhile over here the enemy archers have landed onto the beach so we are going to go ahead use our cavalry to engage them Our elephants can slightly reposition meanwhile our artillery can go ahead and demolish that section of the wall hoplites over here can get into hoplite formation we are going to move them ever so close to the gate and as you can see we are firing volleys into the enemy on the ramparts and uh, this isn't a very significant enemy and uh, pretty much even before our cavalry could reach that archer unit, they have managed to get rid of them by uh, simply, you know, firing off our arrows into them. And pretty good charge. Keep in mind that these units are Nicene cavalry. They haven't taken a bit of damage from the enemy uh, ballista that is there on the walls. However, we are going to pull them back. Then we are going to pull them ahead to supplement our archers Hardman. meanwhile over here we are nearly done breaking that section of the wall and we have succeeded in breaking down that section of the wall we are gonna charge our swords unit up those ladders in order to deal with the enemy units meanwhile a hoplites in group number six can go ahead and burn down the gates wonderful good stuff all around Hoplites really, our, sorry, our Armenian legionaries really need to go up the ramparts. However, the problem with creating breaches is like this is that the pathfinding is pretty weird. So they actually try to go into the breach, as you can see. So I am stopping that from happening, obviously. Meanwhile, we're also almost done breaking this section of the wall. And once we do that, we are going to focus on creating yet another breach. wonderful so there we go we have created another breach we're gonna get our hoplite unit into the settlement and we are gonna get them in slowly as possible meanwhile our artillery will attempt to create yet another breach through which our elephants can get through into the city our general is under attack hey one of the way you can force your legionaries to go up is by simply clicking onto the ramparts like so and hopefully they should be able to go up the ladders we are going to go ahead and do the same thing over here send up these legionaries up there we do have a final volley hopefully it will break and uh, unfortunately we weren't able to break that section of the wall so we're gonna have to push in with our hoplite unit what we can actually do is that this is a melee unit so we are just going to deactivate our hoplite formation move out of the way get our legionaries back in here they can probably charge this unit in the flank meanwhile our spartan hoplite can engage this roman italian swordsman they should make a uh, pretty quick work of them because of course, uh, these units aren't uh, that great. Meanwhile, our elephants have managed to charge into the breach. And they are causing some significant casualties, but as always with elephants, we want to keep them moving in order to maximize the casualties they inflict. And a quick look at our elephant units charging into, into the uh, enemy uh, formation. And with that, yes, our elephants are going to keep charging. And they can charge into these missile units. They are a very easy target. We can pretty much route all of them as quickly as possible. 
So let's go ahead and keep moving our elephants across. Meanwhile, our horse archers can come into position, our archers as well. Get group 7, our Spartan hoplites, to kind of try to re attack that breach. And we're gonna keep moving our elephants across. We can fast forward the battle over here. One of our units has used all its ammunition. And with that, we are nearly done wiping out this unit as well. It's quite easy actually with elephant units. This is why elephant units are just so important in the game. They're incredibly powerful. And finally, we can move our general up to the walls, begin to inspire some troops. Elephants are going to go ahead, charge into these spearmen. They're going to do a lot of damage. Select this elephant unit to move there. Select the next elephant unit to do there. It's about a cycle charge. Quickly slow down the battle. And this elephant unit is going to do some massive damage over here. Charging downhill into the swords unit. There's pretty much nothing these units can do. And we are almost done winning the battle. Meanwhile, our general can go ahead and inspire the troops. And quickly move our elephants across. Move our... Horse archers as well. We are going to fast forward the battle. And as you can see the enemy is already routing. And so we have won the battle. And I will see you all in the campaign. And with that we have completed the conquest of Libya. Taking over Kyrene. We are going to go ahead peacefully occupy the settlement. We lost only 150 troops. In taking over the settlement and our army to Mesopotamia should be fully replenished within the next turn. Meanwhile, we are also going to dismantle this building over here in order to get that garrison up to full. I'm going to dismantle all the other buildings that we don't need. And we can also get a supply pit over here. With that, I am going to go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Welcome back to the next turn. We are going to keep marching our army, all three Mesopotamia, up to Illyria. We are going to try to put him into this port so that we could perhaps invade the Italian peninsula with him. Meanwhile, a quick look at our provinces as usual. We can go ahead and upgrade Kyrene. Get a temple here. Meanwhile, get another stables over here. Upgrade Apollonia. Everything seems to be going fine. We are making even more money. So our economy is snowballing into an absolute behemoth. And yes, we can finally upgrade even the buildings in our food provinces. Although they consume food and will make our food provinces less effective. It does help with the growth rate as well as you get a lot of garrison. So a lot more defensible. Should any need arise for their defense. And we are going to go ahead and build a temple over here. Some of our characters have leveled up. Some have uh, come of age. So we are going to go ahead and select all of our characters that have leveled up. We do have army 1 Parthava Parthia over here. And we are going to march them towards the Balkans as we need to do that. Meanwhile, Horde 5 Asia over here in Scythia, slowly making its way down to the Balkans. And in the next turn, it should actually reach Thrace, so that's good news. Meanwhile, in Libya, we can move our army. Let's first go ahead and move all our dignitaries across Africa. It's pretty much a migration. And we can select um, Horde 7 Egyptos, move it towards Euphranta, go ahead and conquer our very first African settlement. And because we actually demolished the building in Kyrene, the main settlement, as you can see our garrison is almost full. We are only waiting on those medium 
uh, you know, those medium spearmen, the Parthian spearmen. However, our light troops are already at maximum. That is great. Um, what we can also do is even move Army 2 Mesopotamia towards Euphranta. And uh, yes, we do need to also change our Admiral to Nurem. I believe his name was, as he did have some skills in the Admiral tree. So if we can find him, there we go, Narem Suen. Go ahead, hire him as an Admiral, upgrade him. And as you can see, he does have some naval skills. We are going to go ahead and give him that upkeep cost for the ships as well. Some authority, perhaps... All right, wonderful. And uh, just a side note on our economy, as you can see, our taxation is on low. If I increase it to high, to medium, you can see Asia is making 121. And if I increase it to high, <laughs> absolutely insane, isn't it? Anyways, I am going to keep it on low because that does promote a lot of growth rate. And growth rate is actually very important. Uh, I can also move Horde 6 Libya. Go ahead and upgrade all of the troops to attacking Euphranta. It will take some damage from the march to Euphranta. Now I'm going to go ahead and fight the battle. However, I will not show it because it is a garrison battle. Meanwhile, over here, Horde 1 Parthia is fully replenished. So that is good news. And we can also move army for Italia into the Italian peninsula. And now what we want to do is we actually want to attack this Roman army. And I'm not entirely sure if they will retreat. Go ahead, move our spy up to Maidland. Go ahead, deploy him. We do have a full stack in Octoduran. Meanwhile, down here in the south, we can move our spy further south towards Roma. And we want to put our spy in Beneventum because then we can get a good line of sight of what's going on on the southern tip of Italy. Meanwhile, up here in the north, let's quickly open up our strategic overview. What we do intend to do initially is to completely hold the province of Cisalpine Gaul. As well as probably release the provinces of uh, Octoduran as well as Korea. And uh, we are going to give it to the Vindalici who are at war with the Romans. And what that will do is that it will prevent the Romans from reinforcing Italy through the Alps. And their only route of reinforcing Italy will be through Genoa from Massalia. So we will be able to cut out the Romans and pretty much then have a free march against Italy. Uh, meanwhile, the Romans, if they have to cross Cisalpine Gaul to, or sorry, uh, have to cross Raetia and Nori Noricum, they will have to reconquer those settlements in order to access Cisalpine Gaul. So that should slow down the Romans a bit and we can focus our attention to the southern parts of the Italian peninsula. Now that Horde 1 Parthia is in position, we are going to go ahead attack with Horde 2 Parsa. The auto resolve looks fantastic, however, it is our first battle against a Roman Legion. We do have two Horde armies, so I am going to go ahead, save real quick, hop into the battle, and I will see you all in the battle. Alright, welcome to the battle. Let's go ahead and start. And... Uh, problem is our reinforcements are actually coming from the other side of the map so we're gonna have to see how that works out what we can do is kind of try to entice the enemy one two three four five go ahead maybe try to pull these guys out of there one two three four sorry let's go ahead uh, select these two three four five Come here. Come a little bit closer as well. We are at your you can be actually... I'm going to group you into one group. Group 2. Why do you have one less unit? Ah. 
Yes, you should have one less unit actually. We're gonna toggle on that skirmish mode. Meanwhile, the other horse archers can be in group three. Go ahead. Wanna get these guys out. Group four, group three. Toggle on that skirmish mode. Try to entice the Romans to... We want to gain that river crossing. We're gonna slowly move our horse archers up ahead. Group 3 is our other group. We really, really want to minimize our casualties over here. Quickly move back group 2. Uh, get these guys into another group. This is our generals. They can be in group 1. Group 7. Group 4. Group 3. These archers can come here. Keep firing against these units. And what they don't have is a bunch of cavalry units, so that should be quite good for us, with the exception, of course, of their general. Just keep firing into the enemy units. Meanwhile, group 2 over here can also begin firing into the enemy units. This is a very peculiar river battle. It's only got a single crossing, so I can't really link up with my army. And we are going to be split up like this. However, we can use that to our advantage if we manage to keep the enemy stuck between both of our nomadic horse archers. So let's go ahead and attempt to do that. Meanwhile, this general unit, bring him all the way up here. You can already see some of the units of group 2 routing. There's nothing much these Roman units can do against a horde army like this we are gonna go ahead and quickly try to encircle the enemy over here sandwich them in between both sides and they are getting shot in the back there's pretty much nothing they can do about it and it looks like they are taking the bait they do want to cross the river so and if they do that we are gonna pull back keep attacking them with group 3, we're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to be a little bit more bold. As you can see, these units are taking an absolute beating, getting shot in the back by arrows. And uh, being shot in the back by arrows is absolutely important to dealing maximum damage. And uh, I believe group 4 is a cataphract unit. Keep moving. gonna turn off the fire at will here toggle on the melee charge into that enemy unit and this unit should pretty much take a lot of damage meanwhile group 3 can slightly pull back we want to move all of these units behind as well group 3 on the other hand you're done with this cavalry unit I just want to make sure it drops below 30 so that it does get wiped out and there we go it has and now i'm going to toggle on the fire at will once again push closer to these units group seven you can go ahead start to attack the general unit Try to split up group 2 a bit so that they kind of encircle the enemy over here. Encircling is quite good because then you get to shoot your arrows into the flanks of the enemy unit. And as can be seen, now Camel Cataphracts have done a good job against the enemy general, so we are going to pull them back. And over here, you can see that the enemy is kind of in a dilemma. And they are pretty much stuck at the river, so they are going to take quite a bit of damage from both sides and uh, pretty much nothing much to do over here it's gonna be a very easy battle we have taken really few losses and what we are going to do is activate Cantabrian circle for both groups 
so that we fire a lot quicker into the enemy units. A lot of Romans dying in the river and uh, nothing much they can do about it. Group 3 can get out of Cantabria and keep pulling behind. We're gonna pull you back, all the way back. Group 2, meanwhile, deactivate your Cantabria and come a little bit closer. And we are gonna fast forward a bit over here. Now we can pull Group 3 back. Over here. Make them keep, keep making them cross that river. Pull Group 3 back again. And uh, what we want to do is move our camel cataphracts all the way around. Move our other cataphracts closer over here. Group 2, you can push up. Group 2, come back. Group 3, keep going ahead. Camel cataphracts, go ahead, charge Our that unit. Group 2 is nearly done using all of its ammunition. Gonna pull back Group 3 here real quick. Group 2, keep coming forward. One of our units is Camel cataphracts can go ahead. Alright, Group 3 can get into that Cantabrian circle. Group 2, keep pulling behind. One of our units has used all its ammunition. These units can go ahead and charge over there. Group 3, go ahead, just charge into this unit. This is a Principe unit, should take quite a bit of damage. One of our units Meanwhile, a quick look ammunition. at some of the other units. We can go ahead and hunt down those units. And we can hunt down these units as well. Group 3. Ammunition. Wonderful. Activate your Cantabrian. One and quite easily, we have won the battle. We are going to go ahead, chase down all of these units, and I will see you all in the campaign. And down goes Legio 7 Concordialis. Very first Roman legionary defeated on the field of battles with only 12 men lost. And uh, we are going to go ahead and enslave all the Romans. Romans need to be enslaved. We as Parthians have no love for the Romans. Meanwhile, we also have a fully replenished army over here. Horde 1 Parthia is the only army that took a little bit of casualties. And uh, what we could do is uh, we could attack in the next turn. And I'm actually going to retreat Horde 1 Parthia a little bit behind. We can use Odd 2 Parsa to kind of push towards Aretium is a good option. Even Ariminum is also a good option. It's, it is within reach. Aretium does have a light garrison. But before we go ahead and do that, let us not forget to attack Euphranta. So I'm going to go attack and I will see you all after the battle. And down goes the garrison of Euphranta. We are going to go ahead and peacefully occupy the settlement so that we can replenish a little bit. In this turn, we are going to turn off the taxes. Go ahead, dismantle the buildings. Build a fishing port over there. Farm over here. As well as we can dismantle that building and build a military recruitment building. Keep in mind, I am specking this to be a future region for our new satrapy, our Punic satrapy, that will be released in Karthadasht with the capital of Karthadasht. Meanwhile, quick look at all of our characters. One of our champions has leveled up, so let's go ahead, get him some abilities. Wonderful. Meanwhile, I think we are done for this turn. Let's have a quick look of our recruitment in Parthava. And we are almost done recruiting uh, both armies over here. After which we will be starting to recruit our last army horde 8 Italia. So without any further ado, we can go ahead and end this turn and I will see you all in the next turn.
Welcome back to the next turn. Another character comes of age. We are gonna slowly move hard. Hard for Syria towards Apollonia. Meanwhile, we can also move hard three Mesopotamia into that port in Yadar. And we are also gonna move army for Italia towards Batavium. And uh, both of our armies over here are in a pretty good position. This legion can technically not reach us, so that is great. Quick look at our garrison in Patavium. It should be good enough. And this horde to Parsa can actually go ahead and attack Genua. So we could go ahead and attack Genua. That would be a good idea. So we are going to go ahead and we're not going to risk it with our faction leader. We are going to go ahead and uh, attack Genua with Horde to Parsa. It is another garrison settlement, so nothing much to show there. And we can also move Horde 1 Parthia to support them. However, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, what could happen is after we attack Genua, this Legio 13 Ferrata could attack Genua, so we have to watch out for that. Meanwhile, our spy up here can move towards Massalia, get a line of sight of what's going on over here. We have another Roman full stack that could attack us, so yeah, we have to kind of get both our armies over here. And uh, we could lose Patavium to this army. The other army cannot reach Patavium. However, if we do lose it, we do have army for Italia nearby, so I'm not too concerned. Meanwhile, down south over here in Africa, Ufranta, our army is slowly replenishing. They should be able to replenish completely in the next turn. We can march Horde 7 Egyptos towards LPQY. We can lay siege to the settlement. Meanwhile, we are also going to move Army 2 Mesopotamia ever closer towards Carthadasht. That is the objective overall. Going to keep marching our armies westward. Our spies, sorry. And since we now border the Nasimones, who are at war with Rome, we can establish a trade agreement. They do have moderate uh, desire to become our satrapy. So there we go. We have created a satrapy out of them. They are on neutral, so we are going to pay them a little bit of money to get them to about friendly. However, and pay them a little bit more. They should be a lot more friendly. And uh, the more we attack the Romans, the friendlier they will get. However, let's take a quick look at our provinces. Can go ahead and upgrade some of the settlements. As you can see, we are fully replenished with our garrison in Kyrene. So that is great. Meanwhile, we are also going to improve our garrison in Euphranta. Wonderful. All of our other provinces seem to be fine. We can go ahead and upgrade this building. And as you can see, we have almost 2 million in our bank. So not really struggling when it comes to our economy anymore. Meanwhile, I do remember in Pathava we should have an army fully recruited up. We are going to go ahead and march him out. Horde 9 Gallia can move towards Macedonia. And we also have Horde 9 Africa. We can move him towards Africa. Kyrene in particular. And lastly, we of course have... Horde 8 Italia that is recruiting up an army and in about two turns it should be ready to move towards Italy. And uh, also Horde 5 Asia can finally make its way into Thracia. And as such it can begin recruiting. Quickly go ahead, upgrade the entire army. Wonderful. And without any further ado, let us just quickly check our characters who have leveled up. 
seems like Horde, Horde Pengalia, the general, has leveled up. So let's go ahead and get some skills for him. And uh, yeah, it seems perfect with that. We can go ahead and fight these two battles. However, I'm not going to show the battles as they are just simple garrison battles. And I will see you once the battle is done. Okay, down goes the garrison of LPQY. We are going to go ahead and peacefully occupy the settlement. We have lost only 26 troops. So we should be able to easily replenish them in the next turn. We are going to go ahead and just dismantle this building. Go ahead build a farm. We go ahead and dismantle both of these buildings. We are going to build a barracks and the resource building as well. Try to help improve the um, economy of the province of Africa so that when we give it to our satrapy, it should be able to, you know, benefit greatly from it. So we are going to spec it in a way that they can benefit from. And before we end the turn, we are going to lay siege to Genoa. Once again, not going to show the battle over here. Auto resolve is really great. However, we all know that auto resolve gets rid of our cataphract unit, so I am not going to auto resolve it. Instead, I am going to fight the battle. However, I won't be showing it because I will only show the battles that are worthy of being shown. And I will see you all after the battle. And down goes the garrison of Genoa. We are going to go ahead and peacefully occupy the settlement. We only lost 17 troops in that siege. Very easy battle gonna go ahead quickly pop out of the settlement and uh, we are gonna get some of that replenishment rate as well and as you can see in Genoa we can dismantle some of the buildings go ahead dismantle this building and with Genoa our supply should be a little bit higher since it is a port settlement so it should be a lot easier now Keep our armies within Cisalpine Gaul. However, without any further ado, let us go ahead and end the turn. And I will see you all in the next turn. Welcome back to the next turn. We are going to stop the adoption. More children being born. And you might notice I'm not playing a lot into our politics. And that is because we don't really need to. We have a lot of characters. A lot of them with good enough skills to get rid of any characters we don't desire. However, I'm just going to focus on my main lineage keep improving them so that I will always have a character at least that is pretty good meanwhile our faction leader can go ahead and keep educating characters that's something we can't ignore and uh, yeah he is done with that quick look at our other parties they're quite loyal we can go ahead and improve the public order in certain of our provinces namely Mada and uh, also perhaps Africa and maybe even Genoa. The Salpina seems to be fine. Africa. Africa is at 100% already. So let's just go ahead and upgrade the public order in Cisalpina. Quick look of what's going on over here in the south. Our army is slowly making its way towards Karthadasht. Meanwhile our spy can completely go towards Karthadasht can begin to spy over here we do have a roman fleet in fact two roman fleets in the region we have to be a little bit careful about them but as long as we have these armies that are garrisoned over here shouldn't have much of a problem to deal with them uh, meanwhile our own fleet is busy recruiting and in about four turns they should be completely recruited speaking of recruiting Quick look into Parsa. Things are going quite well. And speaking of Parthava, sorry. Let's quickly go ahead and look at all of our settlements. The settlements we can and cannot upgrade. Uh, over here, what I need to build is perhaps I need to build a trading space as well as a shrine. And I can also get a dignitary. And I am going to go get her dignitary that gives extra growth rate. Meanwhile over here this army. The army at Octodurin has buggered off. So that is good news. We can move this army closer towards Medlan. Meanwhile the other horde based armies. Can begin to attack. 
attempt to probably invade Latium. However, what I am going to do is move one of my armies perhaps I wonder, maybe I move one of my armies closer over here, the other army closer towards Genoa. Not sure if this army can reach me. Seems like he can't in the winter, so we are going to go ahead, deploy our spy. Get this guy a little bit closer towards Aretium. It is a little bit risky actually because Genoa will not have a lot of garrison which means if there is a Roman fleet in the region they should be able to dispatch us. However we can move Horde for Syria towards Apollonia. We are actually going to move him towards Epidamnos. Meanwhile Horde 5 Asia has fully replenished. We are going to move him towards Yadar. And as you can see, we are slowly encroaching upon the Romans. And already in this episode, we have conquered about six Roman settlements. It will be seven. However, there's nothing much else to do in this turn. So I'm going to go ahead, actually end this turn. And I will see you all in the next turn, which will most likely be the final turn of this episode. Welcome back to the final turn of this episode. We have completed a research and we have completed our entire civil research tree, which means we have completed economy, philosophy, as well as construction. However, we are now researching in our military technology. We have completed the improved defensive artillery and we are going to go ahead and improve torsion techniques as well. Improved uh, defensive artillery means we can get that final level of our weaponsmith. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Quick look at all our provinces and upgrade some of the temples. Meanwhile, over here, we can upgrade this and build another temple over there. Meanwhile, in Genoa, we can get that trading outpost to improve not only our population, but also our growth rate. I'm going to go ahead and deploy our diplomat to help with that cultural conversion meanwhile in africa we can go ahead and upgrade some of the settlements over here and build another temple actually and we can go ahead upgrade our stables to level three upgrade the main settlement of pella go ahead upgrade in egypt as well Things are looking good overall and with that we have upgraded all of our provinces so let's quickly jump into the campaign again we are going to keep marching our armies towards tapsos if we can take tapsos out we can wipe a fleet in the process um however over here it seems like horde 8 italia has done recruiting so we are going to move him towards epidamnos Keep moving him. Meanwhile, Horde 6 or Horde 4 Syria can move towards the other. As well as Horde 5 Asia can also move towards the other. The other is a good staging point, as you will see over here. I can have my army in the other, move them into the Adriatic Sea, and click attack on aluminum. And as you can see now they are ready to take on. Aruminum. So I'm going to go ahead, fight the battle, and I will see you all after the battle is done. All right, down goes the garrison of Aruminum, and we have conquered our first region in the province of Latium. We are going to go ahead, simply occupy the province. This should trigger the turmoil in Italy. Usually, I try to avoid the event, since I do want to not deal with the Roman army over here. However... In this instance, I am going to trigger them on purpose because I actually want to fight more battles against the Romans, make this campaign a lot more interesting. Meanwhile, Horde 2 Pasa was attacked during the end turn and they did manage to fend off uh, the garrison of Medlan. So the garrison of Medlan is quite uh, damaged and uh, that means Army 4 Italia will have a rather easy time dealing with them. I could simply auto-resolve it 
It is a very easy auto resolve, however, I do want to fight the battle. I do want to take as minimum casualties as I can. Quick look at our horde based armies if they can reach Korea. They cannot. And uh, what can actually happen over here is this army can actually reach Genua. So I am actually just going to hold back a little. Or maybe just stay close enough to be relevant. And, uh, and I am going to attack a Retium with my Shahenshah. Currently there's no one garrisoning the settlement so it's going to be an easy battle. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and fight this battle first. And I will see you all after the battle is done. And down goes the garrison of Aretium. We have conquered our second region in the province of Latium. We are going to go ahead peacefully occupy so that we replenish. We have taken very few casualties as you can see. Just 49 casualties. And we are going to go ahead and repurpose the, pop, uh, the province of Latium. Into a horse recruitment province. And with that, the uh, turmoil in Italy should trigger in the next episode. And that stack should either attack our faction leader at Eretium or Horde 3 uh, Mesopotamia, which is led by our faction heir, Yaxaris, in Ariminum. However, without any further ado, let us go ahead, hop into the Battle of Midland, and I will see you all in the battle. Welcome to the battle we have deployed on this section of the wall and we are going to move up our Armenian legionaries to attack the wall. Meanwhile we can also move our horse cataphracts, use our other Armenian legionaries to get close enough, our hoplites to burn down those gates, our other hoplites can come close enough to this section of the wall and I move my artillery right behind them can also move our elephants as well and we can move our general right behind the archer line and the main objective of attacking this wall is uh, as you can see this settlement is mainly squarish there is no corner except for this one corner which would have been good however it is blocked by these slum buildings over here so unfortunately cannot hack through that route and uh, meanwhile while this is a good uh, area to attack because you have a massive courtyard we are limited in our approach as you do have a bunch of buildings on either side this is the only clear approach and i have positioned my artillery on the left flank because we have a bit more opening on that left flank than we do on this right flank as you can see slightly wider however as you can see all of our troops are slowly approaching the wall we are going to fast forward over here have a nice look at our army getting into position we can turn on the foliage just for that extra cinematic feel uh, i usually like to turn off foliage because i can see my armies a lot clearer however yeah i'm actually gonna go ahead and do that meanwhile our hoplites can go ahead start burning down the gates and we are waiting over here for our ladders to hit the settlement so that our Armenian legionaries can go to the top of the ramparts and now we can go ahead and start breaking this wall 12% we are gonna slow down the battle over here meanwhile our archers are doing quite well against the enemy units we're gonna push them up a little bit ahead Fast forward once again. Hoplite are in position. Go ahead. Keep burning down the gates. Once the gate is neutralized, our Hoplite can push into the settlement. And over here we can see if we attack this wall, we might kill some of their units. Lol. And we are going to go ahead and break another segment of the wall. The gates have been neutralized. And have they been completely burnt yet? 76% so that's pretty good 77 amazing I'm gonna push up our general as well start to inspire everyone 
siege of Mirlan is quite an easy siege. Their garrison is fairly depleted. Meanwhile, group 4 over here can go ahead and attack. Once they do attack, however, we are going to set them up to pretty much just stand properly against the wall. Meanwhile, over here, we have a light spear unit as well as a couple of uh, horse units. Shouldn't be too hard to deal with them. And if we break this segment of the wall, we can inflict some casualties onto these units. As you can see, the wall comes crashing down on some of these units. We can perhaps attempt to make another breach in the wall. Our Armenian legionaries have done well on the ramparts. We are going to go ahead, quickly get them into position onto the ramparts and toggle on that fire at will. Meanwhile, our artillery is damaging this segment of the wall. It is at 76%. 89% and it has broken down, claiming some lives as well. We are going to slow down the battle, get our elephants to charge into that mass. Get our hoplites out of formation, move out of the way of the elephants, give them a clear path to charge into the enemy units. As you can see, our Armenian legionaries are busy um, hurling their javelins at the enemy units. Over here, our elephant units are going to go ahead, charge into the enemy. If they can manage their pathfinding, that is. We're going to fast forward a little bit over here. Once they get over this section of the wall, it should be quite easy. Wonderful. Now it's pretty much just elephants versus the rest. We can move uh, group 6 into the settlement. Elephants already doing a ton of damage against the enemy units. Can go ahead and send in our heavy Nicene cavalry as well. Meanwhile, we can send this group of hoplites to deal with that unit. Elephants have started to take a bit of casualties because we aren't moving them as much. We're going to keep spamming that movement order. And we are going to fast forward the battle over here. Nothing much to see. You can see we're already routing the entire enemy. And with that, we should win the battle. And I will see you all in the campaign. All right, we have conquered Midland. And we have completed our conquest of Sisalpine Gaul. We are going to go ahead, just peacefully occupy the settlement for that replenishment rate. We lost only 62 units in that siege. And our general has also leveled up. We are going to go ahead get that army uh, upkeep reduction as well as some replenishment rate boosts. I'm going to go ahead dismantle these buildings. Get a supply pit over here. That's very important. And we are going to go ahead dismantle all the other buildings. And uh, that's interesting. Yes, we can get a uh, fountain over here so that is great meanwhile if we have a look at our influence we are at 22 influence the romans have lost all latin influence in the province so we should soon be able to convert the province to our accepted culture meanwhile our other army over here could attack octoduran however i'm not sure they did have a full stack over there so I really need to move my armies up ahead in order to see that. The worst thing that could happen is because this is winter, we could take a little bit of attrition while we march towards Octoduran. However, let's move over here. And I'm glad I kind of did because as you can see, um, we do have an enemy unit over there. Meanwhile, we can also improve our abilities. We are going to go ahead and get that campaign movement. This gives 9 campaign movement. However, this gives more. So I am going to go ahead and get that one. Gives me 15% campaign movement range. That is super useful. Keep in mind, Horde 2 Parsa is one of our oldest Horde armies. And as such, it will have a lot of army traditions. I'm going to go ahead quickly deploy our army in that... And they're not going to replenish here, unfortunately, in this turn. So we're going to move them into Maidland so that they can replenish. 
We don't have first class population over here. We do have a decent amount of first class population in Petavium. Quickly look at all of our settlements. It seems to be fine. And also a quick look at our politics. All of our political parties love us. We are going to go ahead and further improve our the wife of Arsicus V. Give her that final authority as well as improve her zeal. She should be a 1077. I'm going to send her on a vacation to improve her cunning. And with that we are also done with politics. And finally, just before we go ahead and end the episode, we are going to have a look at the strategic overview. We started this episode and we pushed out and conquered two settlements in Libya from the Romans as well as two settlements in Africa. We managed to subjugate the Nasimones, making them into our satrapy. Meanwhile, in Europe, we have made some significant gains. We have gained five provinces, including, or oh sorry, five regions, including the entire province of Cisalpine Gaul, as well as half of Latium. So, yeah, things are looking quite good for us in this war against Roma. And Roma is, meanwhile, kind of divided from the Italian peninsula. We have a pretty strong hold in Italy and I would go so far as to say we own half of Italy and that is actually true because the Romans have five provinces and we have, sorry, five regions, I keep saying provinces, and we have five regions of our own. However, the Romans do have the home ground advantage, they will get that turmoil in the Italy event, which means they will have an extra legion to attack us in the start of the next episode. And uh, what we're going to have to do is kind of take away the province, uh, the regions of Octoduran and Korea, give it to the Vindelechi, and hopefully we will be able to cut off Roman reinforcements into the north of Cisalpina. And hopefully all we have to deal through is the singular road from Massalia all the way to Genoa, and that should be a lot easier to manage. And while we do that, we can march all the way down south. However, in the next episode, the main objective will be to actually use Army for Italia to march all the way and capture Taras. Because if we capture Taras, then it's quite easy to move our armies from Apollonia towards Magna Gratia. However, for now, if we have to do that, we can't do the same trick that we can with Iadar. Because we do have a little bit of a beachhead over here to the south of Ariminum. However, if you look at Taras, and if I rotate the map like so, you can see it is surrounded by cliffs, so we can't really land next to Taras. So the only way we can move our troops across is if we actually own the, the region of Taras. However, with that, we should be able to easily own the entirety of the Italian peninsula by the next episode. So we are progressing quite fast. And uh, pretty much sooner or later, we should be able to wipe out the entirety of the Roman faction. However, with that being said, I am going to go ahead and end this video. So I thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more. Peace and love.